All right, it's time for the Three Notched Weekly Preview presented by Three Notched. If you're in Harrisonburg, check out the Valley Collab House. This weekend, I guess more like midweek into the weekend, the Dukes hit the road. A Wednesday game against Old Dominion in Norfolk, Virginia, where they take on the 5-14 and 14 Monarchs with a 1-6 and six mark in Sunbelt play. Uh, Nick mentioned it, Jeff Jones. He's away from the team. He suffered a heart attack. Uh, when they were at the Honolulu Classic, I believe. And he's now being treated for prostate cancer. And so assistant coach Kieran Donahue has taken over as the interim. Uh, so they got that on Wednesday. And, and ODU has been kind of up and down. They they destroyed, what was it, Marshall? And then that's their only win. It's kind of like a weird blip on the radar. And then they got App State again on Saturday. ODU game, Johns Jenkins had 19 uh, the last time these two teams met in a non-conference game, mind you, about a month ago, uh, he had 19. Vashon Alette, Tyrone Williams, and Devin, Devin Caesar all had double digits. And they've all been the most potent offensive threats for ODU this season. This is, I feel like I say this matchup to watch at least once a week. ODU can't defend the three at a, at a good clip. They're 309 country defending the three. This has to be the game where the Duke's three-point shooting finds its rhythm. Yeah. ODU's obviously having a really tough year with the Jeff Jones stuff and, and some subpar um, play overall. That's a winnable game. That's one where, where Jamie's actually gone there already, right in a non-conference game and won on the road at ODU. So I don't it, think like a, be... in, in pretty convincing fashion. Yeah, so similar environment. I think, to be honest, it might even be a little less raucous than that one where Jamie was undefeated and ranked and, and ODU hadn't quite... Uh, tailed off yet so i'd expect this one to to have some some purple fans there i think the dukes will play well bounce back um from some of their i guess one shaky road performance so far in conference play the one that's really concerning right is app state on saturday they've it's, got it, it is it a must win i don't in terms of like getting it at large in terms of setting yourself up well for the end of the season take that for as you will I think you could lose it and still go on a huge run because the rest of the schedule is so manageable and, and maybe even still have a shot at the top seed. You might get the two seed in the Sun Belt. It feels kind of like a must win where if you can get it, um, obviously it's not like, you know, must no games are truly must wins, right? You, you lose it. Life goes on. But All right. One, I want to talk to you about what you said about Sean Clark earlier this year in your our Sun Belt weekly pick them. Those were must wins for him. The, <laughs> I feel like for JMU, like you're having a great year. If they lose this game, they're still going to have a great year. Like it's, it's not like a dire, like type of situation here. You know, no one's losing their job. That's a good um, point. But if you want any chance of an at-large, if you want to keep building momentum, if you want to have a legit shot of being like, we're the best team in the Sun Belt, you can't go 0-2 against App when it's clearly you and App. Yeah. App 15 and four on the season, six and one in conference play. Last time these two teams met at the bank, Justin Abson had 12 points on six of nine shooting. I want you to take a wild guess at what his offensive rating was. 118. 157. I didn't know offensive ratings went up that high. That's impressive. How many blocks did he have? I they, I didn't I didn't see that a, a lot. I think he had at least four. Yeah, I know they blocked seven as a team. Let's see. I'll pull it up here real quick. Well, but he was... He was a game changer for them. Yeah. While you're doing that, it's, I also got to shout out uh, Miles Tate. So you got a little bit of the yin and the yang, the six nine forward in Absin, just demolishing anything inside the paint. Then Miles Tate uh, led all scores with 15, and like the six foot guard just decided to put the game on his back. Four blocks for Absin. Uh, App State won that game despite turning it over 23 times. So I, I think this is one, if the Dukes can continue to turn App State over, which I think is doable, but maybe they shot fake a little better. They have a better game plan. I also think a sneaky important thing here, they play Wednesday and then they play Saturday. So it's not a Thursday, Saturday. Two full days in between games to get the game plan through their heads, which I think has been a problem going from Thursday to Saturday. So an additional day there I think makes a big difference. I think the atmosphere is going to be one of the bigger – road challenges they'll face all season especially recently uh, but it's one i think the dukes can win and i think they'll they'll have a much better game plan to be more locked in given the fact that they've already lost to app state this year yeah you mentioned it too uh their 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 plan of attack in that first game was all right 
let's try and get it inside because we are one of the best interior offenses in the whole conference. But when you get it in there, don't just go up. Shot fake, get them off the ground, go into them, draw the foul. Or, or something along those lines. Instead, it was just driving floaters in the lane that got eaten up by Absin and his running mate. I, I forget his the guy's name. I mean, I'll learn his name because he's going to be destroying us on, on Saturday probably. But like, you got to figure that out, and you have to be willing to drive and kick, drive and kick, drive and kick, because that was something that was noticeably absent against App State in this first game. Also, and I don't, I don't think this is like entirely true. Maybe a bit of a reach here, but the game will be on ESPN two. So if you're talking about like making a national impression or legitimately putting yourself like in the mix for an at-large, winning like one of your what two nationally televised games this year going two and oh in those and beating Michigan state and app state both on the road. Not bad. If you're trying to build an at large case, it's also a quad one game. Yep. Like as of right now, this is their old, their last quad one game on their calendar. Akron could potentially move up Louisiana. If they can kind of figure some things out, could potentially move up to that quad one spot. But as it stands right now, this is the last quad one opportunity you are going to get. And if you go 0-2 against the best team in your conference, like how you were saying, nationally televised game, you can be 2-0 in nationally televised games. That can help kind of how the AP voting, it's all just kind of, what have you done for me lately? Kind of the similar thing when it comes to picking these, these teams in the NCAA March Madness. But if all of a sudden you have lost to App State twice and they're your conference champion in this faux scenario, you potentially have lost to them three times. Why can't you beat the supposedly bet? Like you can't even. So it's a sneaky big game for both reasons. Huge week for the Dukes, obviously. A couple of rivals and the one on Saturday, probably a tougher test, but an exciting test. It's, it's going to be a, a fun weekend. <laughs>